Welcome. So let's play Rule the Waves 2 as France starting in 1920. This is episode 56, and I think it's going to be a relatively straightforward one. I've sorted out my fleet into a peacetime footing, and really, I need money. I need money to build new stuff, new carriers, new cruisers, new destroyers, maybe new submarines if I get over being a bit upset about how poorly they performed. So I'm planning really to just rattle through these early months of 1943 relatively quickly. Everybody's at peace with us. I suppose a quick look at the almanac in terms of who do I want to fight next. Uh, there's America. So the advantage of America is it's a long way away and I don't really have anything left on the map to um, fight them with. So that's good. We're not in anywhere in North Africa here. So there's no obvious ah. So the obvious place of conflict is in the Philippines and Southeast Asia. So they could nick these various colonies off me as the British stole some of them here. Um it's it's not the worst thing in the world. Um but aside from that. As I found fighting America a long time ago, one of us needs to come to the other. So I'm not really feeling that America is an obvious target, as well as obviously now it's the new boss with a huge fleet, 12 carriers. It's a huge fleet, 12 carriers, even though some of them are obviously quite small. But yeah, three times the, uh, the tonnage almost. And they're building three more, we're building one. Okay, they're, again, they're a bit smaller. Yeah. Phew. Need to uh, rein in there. Japan, of course, is always a possibility. They don't have many capital ships. They have seven carriers, but their tonnage is not that flattering. Hmm. Possibility. But yeah, and of course, Britain again, because I'm not afraid of Britain anymore. Oh, no. So let's go to the first turn and we've started commissioning some of those submarines and a new fleet tactics three tier air defense perimeter. That sounds good. Everything that helps air defense is good. And another one, two phase search. Well, I could. <laughs> well, these are very nice uh, research discoveries to come after I've just finished a war. And uh, ah, OK, so this will be interesting. So here we are. Enemy aircraft shot down 184. Well done, guys. Shot down by fighters, 60%. Shot down by other aircraft, 36%. Woo! Shot down by heavy AA-3, by medium one, and by light AA-1. So 5% shot down by anti-aircraft artillery. 40% shot down by other aircraft. That, that, that is quite impressive. Hmm. I'm going to have to have a little think about that. If I have a, a look at my aircraft types in a moment, let's just see if anything interesting is happening. No, just stuff. Aircraft types. Obviously, hmm, if I look at firepower and maneuverability. So my fighter is 8 and 14. I might just have a little look properly at this. Okay, I've had a quick look at the attack and defense qualities of my planes. The attack is a combination of the firepower and maneuverability. Could have added speed, but then I'd have to sort of weight it in some way so that it didn't overwhelm the figure for the attack. So I just thought I'd keep it at that. And the defense is simply toughness. So as you can see, the fighter is considerably more capable than my new bomber, but my new bomber isn't actually in service just yet. Well, actually, no, 10 are. So it's mainly my old torpedo bomber, which is half, less than half. The dive bomber is uh, not too bad. And then the rest, meh, with varying degrees of defensiveness. So I can only imagine that it was this dive bomber, occasionally the torpedo bomber or the flying boat or the float plane. They all, they're all much or not muchness. The medium bomber is very weak. But this dive bomber, I guess, carrying out secondary fighter duties. Anyhow, interesting. 
Okay, I've been having a little uh, think about what I should build next, given that I've got a little bit of money and the carrier is going to be finished in two months' time and the submarines will be finished very soon. So what should I design? Well, I would love to design a carrier. I'd love to design a fleet carrier and I would love, uh, sorry, a light carrier and I would love to design a um, light cruiser or indeed a large destroyer. And I can't really design any of them because their principal gun armament would probably be five inches. And I haven't got dual purpose five inches, despite it being 1943 and despite America having had it for like a decade or something ridiculous. So um, I don't want to build it with five inch guns on the expectation that eventually dual purpose and I'll have to send it into refit. That kind of leaves me with the heavy cruiser. And if we look at a design and ask for a heavy cruiser and get us to auto design one for us. So here's a perfectly nice one, only 52,000. Let's uh, try another. Very similar. And another. Oh, it's just giving me very, very similar ones. Okay, here's a bit more BP. This is 58,000. Oh, okay, that's quite a bit more. The 10 inch guns are zero quality, and that's true across everyone. No one seems to have produced a 10 inch one quality for some reason in this game. We do, of course, have the option of going for nine, eight, or even seven inch uh, guns, and that will, you know, have a telling impact whoops, on the size of the ship and the weight remaining. So I've done a, a little bit of analysis. So I've had a look at the relative gun performance for heavy cruiser guns, so 7, 8, 9, and 10 inch guns. Here we have belt penetration at 15,000 yards and also in the darker color at maximum range. And as you can see, the 10 inch, even though it's a quality zero and it's quality zero for all the nations, has a bit of an edge over the 9 inch. The 9 inch and the 8 inch are very close and the seven inch is quite a bit behind, unacceptably so. The penetration at maximum is still respectable for the 10 inch and uh, has a bit of a dip for the nine inch and oddly enough is better for the um, eight inch. Although of course the eight inches maximum range is less than the nine inch. Here are the maximum range figures so you can see the 10 inch actually has a slightly shorter range than the 9 inch. The 9 inch has a bit of an edge over the 8 inch and again over the 7 inch. Down here in deck penetration, you can see that again at 15,000, there's a lot of commonality. So in fact, the 9, 8, and 7 are the same. And the 10 inch has a bit of a lift, but nothing astronomical. At their maximum range, there's a bigger difference. And again, the 9 inch outperforms the 10 inch at maximum range. And the 8 inch and the 7 inch are considerably uh, worse. And the 8 inch is less than the 7 inch. I think it's because at different maximum ranges, the extent of plunging is different. So uh, the more plunging it is, the better penetration is going to have at maximum range. So at maximum range, a bit of variation, but the nine and the 10 inch coming out very well, but it's a wasting effort because as you can see, they all have maximum ranges of around about 19,000, except for the seven inch, which drops down significantly. So by the time you get to 15,000, they're all much of a muchness in terms of deck. So deck penetration is probably not too significant a factor in our choice of heavy cruiser main gun. The cost difference down here is also interesting. So if you downgrade from the 10 inch to the nine inch, it costs about two and a half thousand. And ditto if you downgrade from the nine inch to the eight inch, it costs a similar amount. From the eight inch to the seven inch, the cost difference is uh, much wider. And then the nine inch, so the seven inch to the six inch, is in line with normal practice. So it's tricky. It's not obvious that the 10 inch is an clear, unambiguous winner. 
The only thing I would say is the 10 inch at quality zero do have room for improvement. So eventually, surely a 10 inch quality one gun is going to be produced and that would significantly lift its performance against the other three. However, you can see uh, against an eight inch gun, you have something like these two combined. So about 5,000 uh, less cost than going from the 10 inch. Now, 5,000 less cost between the 10 and the eight. Well, when you're looking at a ship that costs something like 50, 60,000, it's not insignificant, but it's not actually a vast difference. So for me, I think the nine inch is probably the most effective for right now. And the 10 inch is the most effective long term, assuming that a quality one 10 inch will be researched. So I'm going to design a ship. And if I have to use nine inch guns to um, equip it, then I won't be too upset. But if I can fit 10 inch guns, well, that would be nice. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Total cost is 55,000 for nine 10 inch gun kind of a ship. If we downgrade that to nine inch guns, the 55 goes to 53. And I, you know, I mean, it's nice, but I don't think uh, it's worth it. And also the tonnage saved is not huge. It is quite big on um it is quite big on eight inch guns so we've got 24 tons for remaining on this design if i take it down to nine inch that goes to 460 if i take it down to eight inch it goes down to 850. that's that's not that's not shabby so let's see if we can live with 10 inch guns and see how that goes 10 inch guns Sadly, it has to be four inch, otherwise we'll have no um, heavy anti-aircraft, even though it only shot down 5%. It's got no reconnaissance aircraft. We could, uh, it's only 13,300. So let's pop four planes on, add a uh, at bolt and yeah, torpedo defense one, not happy with. Let's go to torpedo defense four then increase until we get somewhere close to what we need which is 15,000 okay let's take the price up to 57 58,000 if we look at our immunity zone we can see we've got none with four and two inch so let's take this up to say six inch and see how that goes Okay, six inch gives us immunity between 13,000 and 17,000, which is a you know kind of good engagement range. Beyond 17,000, we are a bit vulnerable to plunging fire, but can't protect against everything. And equally, we would need to, uh, below 13,000, we'd need to take it up to seven inches. And obviously that starts to get prohibitive, increases the displacement, of course. 15.9 takes the price up to 60,000. You know, it's expensive. Oh, I probably uh, need to do more than that. If the belt is six, then the turret certainly should be six. I'm not that fussed with the conning tower. Um, so that will make a little bit more. Okay, 60,686. A bargain at half the price. Yeah, I quite like that. See names, uh, the old Admiral Shana, classic names, the Montcalm. I'll go for Amaral Shana. Save that design. All seems to be fine. It's going to take a little while. Okay, that puts a small dent in the finances, but we certainly can cope with that. And then by the time it's ready, I think that um, we'll be in a good place to actually build several. 21 submarines commissioned. A new liberal government wants to come. Uh, spell doom for our proud nation. Yeah, reducing arms doesn't really quite go like that, does it? It would lift the tensions a bit. 
having tensions are so anemic at the moment. I don't want to cut the budget, and I don't want to cut the budget and the prestige, so I will moan. Now, if we go to the Almanac, that takes our submarine force back up to 59, so better than most except for the Russians and the Japanese old people. I think that's all I'm going to invest in um, those, in submarines. I will, however, get moving since my balance has increased with the uh, second of the Dusay class, so that one's still uh, being repaired. So let's go rebuild this one. So this will help with the heavy cruiser situation. And so to April. Hello, my new beautiful chateau carrier. We'll have to put some lovely things. Where are they? Catalyzing close to glider bombs, are they? Hmm. Okay. So we'll just go to air groups. Probably should have created some beforehand for our beautiful new carrier. It seems to have come pre-equipped with uh, aeroplanes. So fair enough. They're all poor. Well, they'll gain experience. If we just have a look at the almanac, look at the tonnage. It's probably more indicative. We have 150,000 tons. Germany, although they have eight, only has slightly more than us. Soviet Union way behind. Britain, although double the number, certainly doesn't have double the tonnage. Italy, although it has seven, has slightly less tonnage. Japan, equally seven, comparable. And America, although it's got 13 compared to my five, only has doubled the tonnage. So I do have some big carriers. Now there's a risk in that, which is, of course, it, <laughs> you lose one, it's really painful. I'm, I'm not as far behind in the carriers as I fear. I still want those five inch guns to be able to build them and the light carriers and the destroyers. Uh, that uh, last to say has uh, finished its repair. So I can uh, go and get that one rebuilt as well. And into May and guided bombs. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, let us uh, go to the build. It costs 2000 We've got nine months before the first of the Ducets come through, so I'm going to stagger the build of the Admiral Shana so that we don't run out of money too quickly. Mind you, actually, I've got enough to build two at the same time. So let's do that. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, in addition to the two, so that will take us to seven. So that at least deals with our heavy cruiser gap a little, till everybody has loads more. But if you look at the tonnage, again, we will have something like 170, which is considerably better. So quality over quantity. And then into June. I'm going to say no to all these air bases. New dive bomber. So what do we have? Our current one has a heavy range of oh, 165, and that is definitively trounced by, well, all three of these, really. I think I prefer the Duvatine over the block or the Farman. Its speed is fine. Its range is significantly more across the range, and then everything else is so-so. Obviously, the reliability would be lovely to know, but we will go with the Duvatine, which then begs the question, do we need something else to be modified? Modified? Do we need something else to be modernized? Uh, this flying boat leaps out at me. This is 1943, and... That's not good. I mean, technically, the fighter might be looking a bit long in the tooth. Let's do a comparison. We are there. Uh, most of the other fighters are older than us. So, And the only one that's more modern is the Russian, and that's certainly slower with less firepower. So, okay, we can get away with that. We look at the flying boat. 
here we are back <coughs> a long way away 550 miles against the ones that we've got figures for and only a thousand pound bomb oh well some of them are taking 16. i i feel that is uh old let's go to our flying boat uh, yes i know the scout plane is ancient as well but scout planes seem to be difficult to improve their um performance so of course we want the flying boat we want it now i've always prioritized range i wonder if actually when you're getting to ranges of 400 miles well no and then actually uh, hmm. let's go for reliability it's hard to know it's hard to make any kind of sensible comparison but it feels like reliability the difference between average and good is the difference between a plane on station and not and whether it has marginally less bomb load or something like that matters less than it's there so that's why I've gone for that one. And so here comes 17 inch guns, quality one. If ever there was a gun that wasn't needed. So yeah, this takes us through to July in reasonable Nick. Pretty happy with that. Heavy cruisers being sorted out. Finances are in a stable condition. Waiting for the uh, tensions to rise a little bit from the original 430,000 to 434,000, so up 4,000. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Stay safe.